So I want to continue the demonstration class which I was taking up earlier, sir. So previously I was taking a disk on which a 4CF active on it. It was given by the interactor with me on that day. And to find out the force required so that there is an accelerated pure loading. And we assume that the frictional forces forward in any direction we can assume from the force equation if it comes negative then the arrow mark should be changed that's all so we can write the linear equation the linear equation is f plus f equal to ma that's first equation the force in the forward direction f plus f equal to ma and the torque acting about the center of mass is f minus f into r that is clockwise and anticlockwise torque resulted torque equal to I R by you know we are taking the torque about this therefore the moment of inertia should be taken about center of mass only therefore M R square by 2 into R phi is A by R so R gets cancelled here F minus F equal to N A by 2 in this equation 2 now from this we can just simply add 1 and 2 and get 2F equal to 3 by 2 ma or F equal to 3 by 4 ma. So this is the minimum force required uh, for your accelerated load. So we have used the uh, principles here, force equation, linear equation and rotational equation we have the start equal to I also. About which point we are taking the torque? about the same point moment of inertia has to be taken. That's very important. The other way to do is only one equation we can take directly. Suppose the friction force is here and the force direction is here. I want to take torque about the point encircled here. If that is the case, the friction force does not provide any torque. There is only one torque that is F into 2R torque is I alpha, I is about which point we are finding the torque about the same point I should take so parallel axis square we can use MR square by 2 plus MR square 3 by 2 MR square alpha alpha is A by R 1 R gets cancelled and here R gets cancelled therefore F is 3 by 4 so in one step we get the same answer the force required so instead of taking up central mass, two equations. The other way is the day we were discussing taking the energy equation. How can we use energy principle to calculate? It is a laborious process, but let us see how we can use the energy principle. Tau theta into cos theta. 
If it is in the same direction, to increase the angular velocity, then we take positive quantity. If a force is trying to decrease the angular velocity, we take it as a negative work done, rotational work done. So that has to be considered when we take the total energy into consideration. Therefore, let us see what is the work done by friction. The body tries to accelerate having an angular uh, velocity in this direction, omega increases, but this friction force tries to reduce it. Therefore, minus F R, that is torque, tau theta, that is the work done, rotation work done by friction. And similarly, F, about this point I have taken, that is plus, because it tries to increase the angular velocity. So, F R, that is torque into theta A, equal to half N square plus half I is mr square by 2 v square by r square because we have to consider the total energy change in kinetic energy is due to the work done by all forces and work done by torque also which has to be considered therefore you have here very important equation here uh, when it has gone by yes suppose you travel yes that means the point of contact has moved on the ground the point of contact has moved on the ground that is theta equal to r by radius because the point of contact is moving on the ground whatever distance it has moved theta can be calculated from that theta is r by radius so yes can be written as theta r therefore so f yes is theta r plus f yes is again theta r or simply, I can uh, leave this as uh, EFS uh, to simplify it more easier way minus FR theta is S by R so that I can cancel R that's equal to plus FR theta equal to 3 by 4 mv square now what we have concluded here is work done by friction rotational and work done by friction translational they cancel out. Therefore net work done by friction is zero. In other words, there is no rubbing at the point of contact. When there is no rubbing, no heat is generated. No heat is generated means no work is done. That's why the terms got cancelled. Now we can use F, now theta we have written as F theta R can written as F theta R plus F theta R. So we can write as 2F theta R equal to 3 by 4 mv square. Now we can write omega square minus omega naught square equal to 2 alpha theta. There is an angular acceleration. Assuming that F is greater, angular velocity is increasing. Omega naught is 0, starting from rest. So I can write theta as omega square by 2 alpha. But omega square is b square by r square 2 alpha. Because b by r is omega. Therefore I can write 2 F r theta is nothing but v square by 2 r square alpha equal to 3 by 4 2 f r into 3, 3 by 4 and v square therefore here you get r gets cancelled here <coughs> so v square gets cancelled here so we have omega square v square by r square equal to 2 alpha alpha is nothing but a by r and then therefore a by r now I can cancel R square, I can cancel 2, I can cancel V square, therefore F equal to 3 by 4 MA cross multiplied. So we get the same here. Even though it is laborious, it is required to know the concept. In certain areas, uh, we can use work power energy, energy conservation. In certain areas, force equations are uh, very easier. In certain areas, torque equations are very easy. 
So we found in three waves taking about the point of contact, taking about the center of mass using energy conservation. Okay, and whenever there is a pure offering, work done by fictionist see. I want to represent some more techniques which can solve it in a very easier way. Some problems are there. Uh, it's a familiar problem in Sivarma we have a pulley, a 1 kg body suspended here and here we have a 2 kg body, here we have a 3 kg body. I think uh, you are familiar with this. Now they asked you what is the acceleration of this, after how much time it will hit the pulley. Here one technique is, I will take the point of the string here and uh, I will just hold it, cut it and hold it. So how much tension you feel, that much mass is connected directly there, removing the whole quantity. So that I want to check. So I will take like this, I will hold it here. This is two. This is 3. Tension is the internal force on the system. Whereas, the same tension is external force on one body. If you consider one body, it is external force. If you consider system, it is internal force. Therefore, on the system, the external forces are 3G and 2G down. This tries to pull down, this tries to pull down. Net force net force by sigma m is the acceleration system. System means 2 kg moves up with certain acceleration, 3 kg moves down with certain acceleration. That is how much? 3 g minus 2 g, that is g, by sigma m is 5. Directly we get the acceleration of 2 kg and 3 kg. In other words, 2 kg is moving up with g by 5, this is coming down with g by 5. Holding it in your hand at rest. Now, I will take one of the body. This is coming down. 3G minus T equal to MA is G by 5. So, T is 3G minus 3G by 5. That is 15 minus 3, 12G by 5. Now, I got the tension here. T and here also T. The one point here, when you are holding, the tension here should be 2T. The 2T is nothing but 24 G by 5. In other words, I am removing this whole thing, 1 kg, and placing here 24 G by 5 means the equivalent mass is 24 by 5. So, 24 by 5 is here. Now we get the acceleration of this body. Acceleration of this and acceleration of this are same. Therefore, net force by mass again. Net force is 24 by 5. 5g minus 1g by total mass 24 by 5 plus 1 equal to acceleration. Therefore, you get how much? 19g by 20, 19g by 5 by 29 by 5 that's equal to 19 by 29g. So that's the technique we use. Instead of using a uh, with respect to pulley and all that. We just cut this and hold it. How much is the tension you experience? 24 G by 5. Remove the G, connect it here, you get the mass. And you get the acceleration. Once you get the acceleration, the remaining things are very easy. After how much time this will hit? After it is created. So this is one of the beautiful technique you can adopt. I would like to represent some more techniques which are very very useful. For examination point of view, because time is also very important, not only the logical, not only the procedures, time is also very important. Now, if I take a rod connected by a string like this, rod weight for mass is 4 kg, and this is 2 meters in length. Now, the question will be asked is, this of course a little surface wall is a fixed point. Now usually the question asked is tension is how much and force given by hinge 
is equal to dash for the force given by the hinge and what the tension a very important point is tension acts on the rod what are the forces l is down tension is upward wall will give a force parallel or upward or downward that we have to say we cannot say wall gives only a force towards right how to say we have 4 kg down tension is in this direction definitely this will be a component theta here this component i have taken a triangle i think i have taken uh, 60 degrees can be for example okay 60 can be theta is 60 okay now if you take 60 definitely the component theta cos theta this is d sin theta d sin theta is less than mg definitely when the whole body is suspended vertically t will be mg how can the component be equal to mg there is no possibility that means there should be some other force upward that means hinge gives fy upward fx forward that is the logic here otherwise triangle will not be completed uh, in equilibrium all the forces when you put in a triangle uh, the vectors are should be zero that is why we have applied this concept now talk about this point force into perpendicular distance i have drawn perpendicular here that gives you anti clockwise torque this force into perpendicular distance is in clockwise torque fx and f point does not provide any torque therefore ng force into perpendicular distance is 1 equal to t into perpendicular distance is x that is how much uh, sin 60 is x by plus 2 2 into root 3 by 2 is x that is root 3 so t into x is root 3 that is 40 by root 3 is the tension tension cannot be equal to the weight how the logic is weight is down tension is at the same angle when it is uh, the component definitely the component cannot balance it there should be something else upward that means the hinge should give a force upward also apart from forward direction force how do you know forward direction is there t cos is there something should be there in the forward direction therefore that's the way you can find and once you get t the very simple upward force is equal to downward force fy plus t cos theta is here t sin theta so fy plus t sin theta equal to mg that is 40 t sin theta sin 60 therefore and again fx equal to t cos theta that is t by 2 therefore you have fx as t by 2 when t by 2 3 we got fx now to get fy fy is 40 minus uh, t 3 by 2 that is t is nothing but 40 by i can take t as 40 by 2 3 therefore you have 40 by 20 there 20 now fx square plus fy square under root gives the net force given by the hinge therefore you have 400 plus 400 by 3 under root 1600 means 40 by root 3 that means it happens to be the same answer the tension that string is 40 by root 3 the force given by the hinge is also 40 by root 3 but it is an inclined at an angle theta where tan theta equal to fy by fx It's a very important concept. Now some more problems of the same type I would like to uh, discuss. Sometimes we will be given a wedge.
of mass capillary. All are frictionless contacts, and you have a rod resting on it, and we have wall here such that the rod is constrained to move in this direction only. Now we want to know the relation between y rod versus y weight. Uh, we want a relation. Once we get the relation, we can use uh, conservation of energy and calculate the velocities. Okay. Now what we shall do is we will take the point of contact on the weight and immediate point of contact. On the rod, on the rod and on the bench, there is two points which are in contact. As the rod moves down, the point on the bench moves away like this. As the rod moves down, the point on the bench moves away like this. So there is diagonal like this. Here the rod is moving down, and the bench moves away like this as the rod comes down. This point on the bench. Moves because the point on the bench here cannot uh, an atom on the bench bit an atom on the bench that has to move horizontally it cannot come down atom cannot be displaced away and the point on the rod should come it in its own direction like this a point on the rod moves in this direction let us call it as a y uh, or y we call it this is x this is theta this is theta this is theta sin theta is y by x what is the beautiful point here is take the point on the rod take the point on the bench which are in contact that point on the bench you observe where it is going at a particular instant and point on the rod where it is going draw the diagram now you get a relation now x sin theta equal to y if you differentiate once you get dx Sin theta equal to dy. Differentiate again with respect to time. Ax sin theta equal to ay. That is the relation. Ay is nothing but rod acceleration. So acceleration of the rod equal to ax is nothing but wedge acceleration. Acceleration of the wedge into sin theta. So it's a wonderful point here. One simple one. Once we know this, the energy equation can be written very easily. That is. As it moves to the side, the velocity we can find, and total normal reaction acting, we should not check the weight whenever one body is resting on the other. The important point is normal reaction. So normal reaction, let us check. Mg of the rod is completely down. This is 90 minus theta. This is 90 minus theta. This is theta. This side we have Mg cos theta in this direction. From the weight we have normal reaction. That is on the rod m t cos theta is the sign. This side we have normal reaction. But the rod is moving down with some acceleration. Therefore, acceleration of the rod is net force by mass. That is m t cos theta minus n by mass of the rod. We got one equation for acceleration of the rod. Net force on the rod divided by Mass. When I say net force, the force in the direction of motion only. Other force is not required because the rod is constrained to move along the wall. Now, what is the force acting on the bench? The force acting on the bench is only normal reaction. Of course, from the ground we have another normal reaction, which is of no use for the movement of the bench. So. You should not say weight of the rod is moving. We should say normal reaction making the weight to move. Normal reaction acting on the rod. Our we should not call it as our weight. We call we should call it as normal reaction. If we are standing on a still floor, it is equal to the weight. Even if the floor is moving down with acceleration or moving up with acceleration, normal reaction will change. So the better word is not using weight. Normal reaction contact force. So this is here theta, and the normal reaction in this direction. This will be theta. This will be 90 minus theta. Normal reaction on the pages opposite in this direction. On the rod up. 
which body we are considering on that body the force should be written. Therefore, one more you have n cos 19 minus theta n sin theta n cos theta will become of course this force is of no use because that does not move the weight. Therefore, weight moves by n sin theta. Acceleration of the weight is n sin theta by its own mass force acting on the wedge in the x direction divided by mass gives you acceleration of the wedge in the x direction only because wedge cannot move under the ground per hour. So once we get these two, we can substitute the value of n in this equation and solve using that equation a r and a w absolute values also can be is it clear point? <coughs> now, what two more problems I want to tell you in this regard. A wedge is on the fourth, a spear is here on the uh, uh, it is in contact with the ball and the wedge. All the contacts are frictionless. The solid sphere is constrained to move downward. It has an acceleration downward only. It falls down. But AES is not equal to G. Because there are some forces. Contact is L is there. Component of L is upward. Therefore, you cannot say it is a freely falling body. This moves with G W. Which I want a wedge. This is some theta. Again, we go to the point of contact. This point on the sphere and this point on the wedge are in contact. After some time, how the diagram happens? The wedge moves away. The point of contact definitely should go horizontally. It cannot move. A downward and this point should move down because this point comes down in contact with here. This point on the way moves forward. This is theta, this is theta, and this will be theta. So once again let us see the point, the, the point on the sphere comes particularly down. Again, it should be in contact with the wind, it cannot be the air. But the point A is in contact with the wedge of different point. The same point is in contact with the wedge now with a different point on the wedge. The point on the wedge which was in contact with the sphere moves away horizontally. This point is no longer in contact with that sphere. That's the point. So theta. Sine theta is y by or we will take tan theta. Tan theta is y by x. Tan theta is y by x. So y is x tan theta. Differentiate once dy equal to vx tan theta. Ay equal to ax tan theta. That is Ay acceleration of the sphere equal to acceleration of the wedge because wedge is going the x direction into so in this way we get the relation. Again by contact forces we can get the, uh, the velocities or we can get the acceleration, individual accelerations at about the time. So once again the point of contact on the wedge moves horizontally. The point of the point A moves vertically down. Again that point A should be on the wedge because the diagram will be like this now. The point A will be on the wedge. Therefore, we can use the tan theta there and get the relation. So, in this kind of problems, the main point is we have to check the point of contact that becomes very easy. So, one more uh, problem I would like to present. We have a system of police sometimes even like this. Let us check 
Just once you know this, there are many you can easily do it. And this is in contact the top. Here we have B block, here C, here A. A is having a velocity at a particular instant 1 meter per second. C is having a velocity 0 0.5 meter per second. I want the velocity of B at that instant. So let us check how this is plot. System of pulleys we have and three blocks are attached irrespective of their mass. We need not worry about the mass. We can get the relation between their velocities and accelerations. Now this is moving up with 0.5 at a particular instant. This is having 1 meter per second at that particular instant. At that instant, what is the velocity? Now, let us, one constraint equation we can write here. Length of the string cannot change. So this plus this plus this plus this plus this remains a constant. So I can write A, B, C, D, E. So, A plus B plus C plus D plus E is a constant. That is length of the string. Let us say this has come down by x because he has already given downward direction. So let us assume the proper direction x. And let us say this has gone up by y. We don't know. Let us say y. This already is given in the question going up. So let us say this point has gone up by z. Very simple technique. This is coming down already given. Let us say at one particular instant it came down by x. At that instant it went up by y. If this pulley goes up by y, this has gone up by y only. Definitely. Because center of the pulley connected to the block. And here this has gone up by z because arrow mark already given on good. Now let us connect the relation. New string length. In other words, we have taken a photograph at one particular instant. Again as they were moving, again another photograph you have taken. The system of this. So you have a plus x, a plus x is the new length. Now b minus b minus y, it has gone up plus c minus y, it has gone up. This is fixed, no doubt, it cannot move. Therefore, b minus y, c minus y, this has come down. So uh, this has gone up. So d minus z and this is how much plus e minus z equal to l again once again j plus x next this has gone up so b minus y this cannot move c minus y this has gone up so d minus z and this length has decreased e minus z l is nothing but a plus b plus c plus d so l will get cancelled with a plus b plus c plus d. Therefore, we have x minus y minus y minus 2y minus 2z equal to this e also get cancelled. A plus b plus c plus d plus e gets cancelled. So, x minus 2y minus 2z equal to 0. We got an equation. Fundamental point is, take a photograph, what are the lengths? Take another photograph at another instant, what are the lengths? The length cannot change. Therefore, velocity dx minus 2vy minus 2vz v equal to 0. Now, dx is how much? 1 meter per second given. Minus 2, dy we don't know. Minus 2, vz is? We should not put the minus sign here. Because downward we assume, x also assume down. Here we assumed it moving upward in the direction of motion. So we should not put minus 0 0.5 because already we assumed it upward. Plus z only we assume. So you should be very very careful. If you had put z downward then you should. Therefore what we write? No, 0 point. Because that is the most important point. Otherwise the whole answer goes wrong. Now this two get cancelled dy is 0. In other words, at that instant, the block is at instantaneous rest. Very important.
So here in this problem, what we come to know is the constraint equation. The string length cannot change at any moment.